In this video, we're going to use Green's theorem to calculate the line integral for the given vector field x, y, and negative x minus y along the path C, which is the triangle joining 1, 0, 0, 1, and negative 1, 0 in the counterclockwise direction. I've done another video where we do this via parametrization. I'll put a link to it down in the description. This time we're going to use Green's theorem, and what Green's theorem allows us to do, because this is a closed curve, going in a counterclockwise direction around the, around the region, it allows us to do a double integral over the region of the curl. Here's a plot of what's going on, and we see we've got our vector field here in blue, and then here is our triangular path, and we're going in the counterclockwise direction. And as we looked at in the last video, we see here along zero, our vector field is perpendicular, so that ended up giving us a line integral of zero. Here, this vector here, we can see pointing against our, our path of motion, and that gave us a small negative value. And then on this path, the vectors were a little larger magnitude also against our path of motion, so that gave us a little bit larger negative value, and we got a value of negative 1. So we already know what the answer should be. Now we're going to do it via Green's theorem, which again is a double integral of the curl over the region, which is this triangular region. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to rewrite the vector field in the form that it was in in the other video, which is xy and then instead of writing negative the quantity x minus y, we're just going to write it y minus x. So there's our vector field. Now we're going to need basically two things to do this. One is we're going to need the curl of our vector field f, which is the derivative of component f2 with respect to x minus the derivative of our component f1 with respect to y, which are pretty easy to calculate for this one. So this, in this notation, f, f1 is the first component, f2 is the second component. So we take the derivative of f2 with respect to x, which is just negative 1. y would be a 0. Derivative of negative x is negative 1. And then we do the derivative of xy with respect to y, which would leave us with negative x. So in calculating this line integral, so if we're calculating f dot dr over our path c, we're going to switch it to a double integral over our region of the curl. And then we're going to have to figure out our order of integration. Well, that's going to be based on our region. So let's go ahead and draw our region over here to the side. So we're going from the point 1, 0 to 0, 1, 0, 1 to negative 1, 0, and then we go across here. So we have basically two linear, fu three linear functions making this triangle, one of which is y equals 0 along the bottom. So we'll need equations for these two. Well, this has a slope of 1 because it goes from negative 1, 0 to 0, 1, and a y-intercept of 1. So the line will be y equals x plus 1. Similarly, we here we have a slope of negative 1, also with the same y-intercept, so y equals 1 minus x. Now, in integrating this region, it's going to be easiest, or to do it with a single integral, we're going to go left to right first, then bottom to top. If we do it the other way, we'd have to split it into two integrals. One integral for the left side of the triangle, one for the right. Not necessary. Let's just do it all in one, but that does mean we need to invert our equations. Easy enough. Solve them both for x. So x on the left-hand side would be y minus 1. X on the solving this right hand equation for X would be 1 minus Y. So we can now go ahead and set up our integral by putting in our limits. We're going to go from left to right. So 
y minus 1 to 1 minus y in the x direction. And then y is just going to go from 0 up to 1. Our integrand is minus 1 minus x. And now the order we've chosen here is to do horizontal first, so dx and then dy. So now we go into calculate mode. So antiderivative of negative 1 with respect to x is a negative x. This will be from 0 to 1. And the antiderivative of negative x is negative x squared over 2. We're going to put in our limits, y minus 1 and 1 minus y. And then we'll still have to do an, an integral with respect to y. Let's plug in our limits. So we're going to have negative 1 minus y minus 1 minus y, the quantity squared over 2. That's plugging in our upper limit. So let's just separate that. And then minus, now negative, now we're putting in our lower limit. y minus 1 minus, now we're going to be putting in y minus 1, the quantity squared over 2. And then again, once we simplify this, we'll still have to do our integral with respect to y, but it's going to be worth our time to, in, to simplify this first. So let's see what happens. So first off, I'm going to distribute this negative sign. I'm going to get a minus 1 and a plus y. And then here, that's minus 1 minus y squared over 2. Now here, we've got a couple negative signs to distribute, but if I distribute this negative sign first, it's going to turn that into a positive, which means I can basically drop the parentheses. I'm going to have a plus y minus 1. Now when I apply the negative here, that's going to make that positive. And I'm going to do something that will make this a little bit easier to simplify. Because this is being squared, I can write in what's inside as y minus 1 or 1 minus y. So I can write it as 1 minus y, the quantity squared. Now one thing you don't want to do is rewrite this as 1 squared minus y squared. If you're going to multiply this out, it does have to be foiled. You will drive your Calc 3 teacher nuts if you do that. I can attest to that. It's a common, uh, common mistake. Now, this is going to all be dy, but look at what happens now. We've got a negative and a positive, those cancel, and now we just collect our like terms. So we have y plus y, so 2y, and then negative 1 and negative 1 minus 2. Actually a pretty simple integral to end things up. So we're going to end up with y squared minus 2y from 0 to 1. We can plug in the 1. We're going to get 1 squared minus 2 times 1. If we plug in the 0, we're going to get 0. And that's going to give us 1 minus 2 or negative 1. Um, if you check out that other video, you'll see this is a much quicker way to do this one. And it qualified for Green's theorem because we had a closed path um, within our vector field.